welcome to the I researched it channel. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. Brett Kavanaugh documentary raises questions about FBI actions during probe. A new, secretly made documentary looking into sexual misconduct allegations against Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh shines a light on the role of the FBI in investigating, or failing to properly investigate, claims former President Donald Trump's nominee in 2018, Doug Lehman's Justice, which premiered at Sundance last week after a last-minute addition into the festival's program focuses on the testimony of Deborah Ramirez, a former Yale classmate of Kavanaugh. In 2018, Ramirez described in a New Yorker article how, during a gathering with friends back in 1983, Kavanaugh allegedly pulled down his trousers and thrusted his penis at her without her consent. Kavanaugh has denied the allegation. Another former Yale classmate also claims to have witnessed an incident of sexual misconduct involving Kavanaugh. In an audio featured in the documentary, Max Steyer can be heard saying that he saw Mr. Kavanaugh with his pants down at a different drunken dorm party where friends pushed his penis into the hand of a female student, as reported by Rolling Stone. Steyer, who declined to participate in the documentary, can be heard in the same audio recording saying that he made the FBI investigators and senators aware of his testimony, but nobody ever followed up with him. The documentary raises questions about why the FBI failed to interrogate Steyer and sent the thousands of tips on Kavanaugh received on its tip line directly to the White House instead of investigating them first. In 2019, the New York Times and the Los Angeles Times detailed how the White House and Senate Republicans ordered the FBI to limit its investigations into Kavanaugh. Two senior federal law enforcement sources who spoke to Newsweek on the condition on anonymity said the FBI would have been concerned about appearing to undo the will of a sitting president. Furthermore, both said it was up to the White House to vet nominees. Responding to a request from Newsweek, the FBI said it did not have a comment on the documentary, but said, in the case of Supreme Court nominees, background investigation requests come to the FBI from the Office of White House Counsel and are conducted pursuant to an established process for executive branch nominees, 2010 Memorandum of Understanding between the Department of Justice and the White House. In this role, the FBI acts as a fact finder and does not grant, deny, or otherwise adjudicate security clearances for individuals, nor does it make recommendations for nomination purposes. The agency added, the FBI works background investigations through its established investigative process and as expeditiously as possible while ensuring that the background investigation is accurate and complete, it said. The scope of a background investigation, according to the FBI, is requested by the White House. The FBI does not have the independent authority to expand the scope of a supplemental background investigation outside the requesting agency's parameters, the agency said. Protesters swarmed the House of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh on January 22, two days after an explosive documentary that investigated his sexual assault allegations premiered at Sundance Film Festival, RadarOnline.com has learned. Since being nominated to the Supreme Court in 2018 by former President Donald Trump, Kavanaugh has been a controversial figure for the High Court due to his personal background and rulings. Before securing his lifetime seat as a justice, Christine Blasé Ford, a former classmate of the 57-year-old, accused him of sexually assaulting her while in high school and testified against him at the Senate Judiciary hearings for his confirmation which was narrowly obtained in a 48-50 to 50 vote. An unexpected and shocking documentary into Ford's claim was a last-minute addition to the 2023 film festival's lineup. The film reinvigorated critics who felt Kavanaugh should not have been added to the bench, and protesters showed up to his home to make their opinion known. It was not the first time Kavanaugh's residence has been swarmed by protesters. Following the Supreme Court's 2022 ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade, which guaranteed abortion access and protection at the federal level, protesters flocked to the steps of the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C., as well as the homes of justices like Kavanaugh, who voted in support of returning the abortion rights to individual states. The most recent gathering of protesters outside of Kavanaugh's house occurred on what was supposed to be the 50th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. Groups of anti-Kavanaugh critics gathered at the justices' home in Chevy Chase, Maryland, around 5.30 p.m. Sunday night. Unlike past demonstrations, those who had flocked to the home to exercise their right to peacefully protest appeared to be aware of the late-night hour and kept their rally cries to a lower level than normal. Cut his time short. A rapist should not rule the court, the crowd chanted as police lined up along sidewalks to form a barricade between demonstrators and the residents. 
Another cry from the crowd that was heard over and over again was, no privacy for us, no peace for you. The chant referred to some of the privacy protections that were once guaranteed by the landmark 1973 ruling. With six conservative justices in total appointed to the high court, including Chief Justice John Roberts, who lives in the same neighborhood as Kavanaugh, it was clear that the past sexual assault allegations were the main reason the demonstration took place at his doorstep. More unfortunate for Kavanaugh was that the Sundance film allegedly brought in tips regarding the accusation within hours of its premiere. According to People, the film Justice by Amy Hurdy and Born Identity director Doug Lyman prompted additional information about Kavanaugh to surface. The filmmaker added that some of the tips were allegedly reported to the FBI, but for unknown reasons were not fully investigated.